Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new NECA animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Baxter Stockman and Master Splinter 2-pack. And this set kind of caught people by surprise because a few months ago NECA announced that this and a couple of other Ninja Turtles figures were going to be pushed back until 2021. But then all of a sudden, this and the Krang figures started to pop up at Target stores in California. I was fortunate enough to find both of those Without too much of a hassle, I had the DPCI numbers, I called around until I found a target that said they had them, and then I stopped and picked them up. It was very simple, no headache, no stress, and I really hope for anyone out there that's looking for these figures that it's just as easy for you guys. Hopefully it is. It seems like NECA is starting to increase the numbers as far as like stock when it comes to the turtle stuff because there was a bunch of these and a bunch of cranks. I've never seen like that many of any turtle figures so hopefully that's a good sign that NECA is trying to increase the numbers and making it easier for people to pick these things up I guess time will tell but it, I mean if they were wise that's what they would do because these figures seem to be very very popular but anyways let's go ahead and get into this starting off with the packaging it is the standard NECA animated turtle style of packaging we are able to see the figures through the window along with a bunch of the accessories and then we have some really cool artwork in the front on one side we have Baxter and on the opposite side we have Master Splinter and then in the center it does have the old school iconic Ninja Turtles logo on the side of the box we get a shot of the Splinter figure on the opposite side of the box we get a shot of the Baxter figure and then on the back we get a look at both of them along with some other figures that were recently released and then some information about the turtles so the packaging does look really cool I like all the different colorful artwork it's really nice but enough about the pretty box let's go ahead and take these figures out and take a look and so here we have Baxter and Splinter right out of the box and man these are some beautiful figures but before I get too far into what I think about these guys I just kind of want to explain my process for opening up NECA figures so pretty much every single time that I open a NECA figure I always put some heat to the joints because NECA is notorious for weak joints that kind of break off and do all kinds of crazy stuff and with these two guys I did have a couple of things that made me nervous initially but I was patient with it I would put some heat to the joints before I tried to do anything and it turned out to all be okay so for Master Splinter the things that made me nervous were the shoulders because the upper bicep is pretty thin and at first the shoulder seemed really tight so I definitely had to put some heat there and once I did it was able to move freely and the other thing that made me nervous was the toes I could not get these things to move. It took me forever. It took me about an hour uh, messing with both of these figures to get all the joints to where I felt like it was safe to handle freely. And once I did that, I was completely happy with these guys. But I just want to emphasize that it's always a good idea to take your time with NECA figures, heat things up, move things around slowly. Don't force anything. If, it, if something's making you nervous, put it down, come back to it. Don't force anything because you will regret it. With these guys... I just took my time. Like I said, it took me about an hour to break everything free. And once I did, it was all good to go. Since then, I've had no problems. And real quick about that, I know that it's kind of bullshit that we have to do these kind of things for our figures. But at the end of the day, for me, I don't really mind putting some work into something as long as at the end of the day, I'm happy with the product. And that's kind of what happened here. Like, yeah, you know, it'd be nice to pull the thing out of the box and mess with it without any stress or any worry. But sometimes that's not the way it works. In this case... I took it out of the box and then an hour later I was able to play with them with no stress and no worry. And to me, I could live with that. Uh, but that's something that you personally have to think about if that's okay with you. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about these freaking masterpieces. <laughs> because both of these things are so awesome. They did such a great job. We'll start off with Baxter Stockman. So, just look how cute this thing is. <laughs> First of all, everybody that I've shown this to is just like, oh, look how cute it is, you know. And I see why. He, he kind of has like a like an adorable kind of look to him, especially considering he's like a weird fly character. But yeah, man, they did a good job with it. This is exactly how I remember the character from the cartoon. And I just love everything that's going on here. The sculpting work is really nice. Again, we have all these little lines that, you know, NECA has been doing forever with their animated turtle stuff. They add all these little lines to make it look like uh, more animated and cartoony and I just really love it but let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at the details on Baxter starting off with the head and man I just love this head sculpt so much the hair looks really good and it is soft plastic so when you're moving around the head you don't have to worry about hurting your fingers on these like sharp hair pieces you know so that is awesome and uh, one thing I really love about this head sculpt is the eyes I like how the paintwork on the eyes kind of make it look like it has a reflective quality you know like we have these little white uh, streaks on there and it kind of looks like light is reflecting off them i think that's awesome 
and then moving down to the mouth. The mouth is not articulated or anything, so it does stay open like that, but it does look really good. And it's just a very well done head sculpt. Moving down into the body, I think the bow tie looks really good. Again, we have those black lines that look awesome. And then you have his little vest. And the torso is like a soft, rubbery plastic, but there is articulation under there. But it's hindered a little bit by this little soft overlay thing. But it does look really good. The sculpting work on it is very nice. Moving over here to the arms. The arms look really good too, but I do have some paint imperfections on the right arm. Some smudges and scuffs and stuff like that. So that does kind of suck. I might have to touch that up. And moving down into the lower legs, I do have some ugly paint right here on the thigh. I wish I could find a way to clean that up. Got a little bit of a paint splotch or whatever you want to call it. But aside from that, the figure looks really good. There's not a whole lot wrong with it or anything. There's not a bunch of imperfections. There's a little, a couple little marks here and there, but nothing that's driving me too crazy. And then on the back of the figure, we have these really cool looking wings that stick into the back. And then he also has his extra set of fly arms or hands or whatever you want to call these things. These all look really good. The wings look great. Uh, some of the paint right here isn't all that well done. It gets a little sloppy. It's not as sharp and clean as it could have been. But yeah, aside from a couple of little paint imperfections, I think this is a really good looking figure and he's a lot of fun to mess with. And like I said, he's just like adorable, which is not something that I, I'd ever thought I'd say about Baxter Stockman, you know? <laughs> but yeah, he's a really cool figure. And then let's go ahead and take a look at Master Splinter. I'm more excited about Splinter here because I have the uh, Super 7 one and I thought he was cool, but... Secretly, I just bought that one to hold me over till this one came out. This is probably the figure that I was most excited about, aside from Casey Jones from this line. So this guy came out really good. He does have an articulated mouth, so you have some different kind of options. And when you open up his mouth, kind of gives him a different look. And he does have a, a soft goods robe. So you can remove it if you want. I haven't wanted to remove it because I didn't want to have to deal with retying the, the belt thing here. Just kind of like how it is right there. So the rope thing is really well done. It looks good on the figure. Doesn't get in the way of the articulation or anything like that. So I'm happy with that. And then getting in close to take a look at the details on Splinter. As you can see, the sculpting work on this is very well done. And I'm happy to say that the eyes on mine look really good. Because I have heard a couple people say that they've seen some with really bad eyes. So thankfully, mine came out alright. And then he does have the black lines to accentuate that animated look. And I like how the fur kind of has two tones to it. In the front, it's like a light brown, and then it gets darker in the back. And then we have his nose and his teeth. And you can open up the mouth, and when you do, you can see the pink and red in there. And moving down into the neck here, we have the light brown in the front, dark in the back. And the sculpting work on the body is really good, too, as you can see. He's got sculpted rat hair all over <laughs> so that looks really good and then on the shoulder here we've got his little emblem and let's check out some more of the sculpting work on the arm here so you can see some sculpted fur there the hands look nice I do wish that he had a little bit more paint on the nails or some paint just period because there's not a whole lot going on here but they do look good because the sculpt is nice. And the robe is really nice too. There's not like a bunch of loose threads or anything like that. There's a few here and there, but nothing major. And then we have the belt. And then under the robe, let's check out some more of the sculpting work. So there you go. And then here at the feet, he's got his ankle wraps. They look nice. The toes look good, but again, they would have benefited from a little bit more paintwork. And then we have the tail, which does have a bendy wire. And it does look nice. Yeah, I really love the way this Master Splinter looks. Again, it's exactly the way that I remember it from my childhood, and I just really, really like it. He looks like a badass. So both of these figures are just beautiful. Like I said at the beginning, they did such a great job with the look on these guys. And as far as accessories go, I'm kind of blown away by what we have going on here because NECA threw in so much fun stuff, and a lot of it is very obscure, deep-cut Ninja Turtle items. So hardcore fans are going to be very excited for what comes in this set. But let's go ahead and start off with the simple stuff. First off... Both of these figures come with multiple sets of hands. Baxter has a pair of fists, and then he has a set of loose gripping hands. 
and then he has a set of trigger finger hands that could be used to hold on to the blaster he comes with. And then Master Splinter comes with a loose set of gripping hands that could be used to hold on to the books that he comes with or any of the other random items. Then he also comes with a set of tight gripping hands that could be used to hold on to the sword that he comes with. And then he has a pair of hands that kind of have his fingers in weird positions. I'm not really sure how to describe these things, but I feel like they could be good for like martial arts type of poses. And then he has one right hand that could be used to hold on to the little blaster that he comes with. And it also has his index finger sticking out, so you could use this as like a pointer finger. So that's good stuff there. A pretty good amount of hands for both figures. But let's go ahead and move on to the crazy stuff. First off, we have Baxter's computer. And we've got like a little... Uh, face changing effect there on the screen <laughs> that's kind of cool and just check out the detail on this it has a very cartoon look and feel to it with the black lines and everything got some stuff going on on the back here whoa oh is there three faces there's one two th uh three yeah one two three <laughs> that's very cool Then next up we have Baxter's little flower plant. Or this is probably not for Baxter, huh? This might work better for Splinter. I don't know. It could work for both of them, I guess. But we got some nice detail on there. We have some flowers and some leaves. I love the bright colors. And then let's see here. We're just going to kind of jump all over the place. This is crazy right here. We have Mikey as like a gopher or something. Or a hamster. <laughs> Look at that. This is awesome. Some of the paint is a little crazy on the head. I might have to touch that up. But this is like the... This is a crazy accessory. And man. So like if you're not familiar. I wasn't familiar. I had to ask my friend who's like much more uh, well versed in the Ninja Turtle lore <laughs> than I am. So he had to kind of school me with this. But yeah. So I guess uh, Baxter shoots people with his little gun here. And then he could turn them into various animals so that's what happened to mikey here speaking of baxter's gun look at that then we have the dial here i do remember this gun i just don't remember the turtle i don't remember mikey being transformed like this well i don't remember like off the head there's so i mean it was so long ago that i was into this show you know <laughs> but uh crazy stuff and this is awesome here Ooh, turn someone into a donkey a fly a, a cat a turtle and the detail on this is really nice. I love the consistent look between all these accessories. That really cartoonish look, you know. And then since we have this. Look at this here. We have Shredder as a fly. <laughs> this set is like a box set. There's like four characters in it. But the detail on this is really good. <laughs> Man, this is crazy, crazy stuff. And let's see, do I have anything else that that's for Baxter? It doesn't look like it. That's about it. So let's move on to Splinter's accessories because he comes with a bunch of cool stuff too. I'm going to start off with this because I don't remember the yin and the yang necklace. On some of the promotional images, it showed Splinter wearing this and then he was, you know, he had the blaster. So let me know in the comments what that's all about cuz this one I'm totally lost. Like, why would Splinter need a blaster? Maybe it's like a one of those times where he was, like, switched bodies with, with Shredder or something. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. But both of these look really good. He has no problem holding on to this blaster with that hand that I showed you before. And the details on this are really nice. And then let's see. We've got so much cool stuff for Splinter. Let's look at this. Bam. We've got this little scroll here with some characters on there. This looks really nice too. I like the torn paper look here. Very cool stuff. And we have his cane. And this looks really nice. The sculpting work on it is really well done. Then we have some paint work. Nice. And then we've got his closed book. This book looks really good too. There's some good sculpted detail on it. Again, we have that cartoonish look that I love. 
Maybe this is Baxter's book. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Like, there's so much stuff here that I'm not sure <laughs> who's supposed to get what. But, you know, there's just a lot of little props and stuff that you could use for different things. But this book looks good. But this book is even better. Check that out. So it's the book that he got the uh, turtles' names from. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and the best turtle of all, Raphael. For some reason, he looks like a girl. And this book is just called Art, and it's written by M.H. <laughs> Look at that. And then I almost forgot about this. Splinter comes with a little training mat, I guess you could call it. And I'm not even sure what this is made of. It's not paper, but it doesn't feel like cloth either. So it's some weird material. But I think this is a really cool accessory. And I plan to actually display my turtles on it. I might have Splinter like in the center here with the turtle standing behind him. But this is just like a random thing to throw in here. But I think it's really cool. So I'm happy they included this. And the very last accessory that he comes with is the blade. And this is really nice. But it kind of makes me nervous because look how thin it is right here. I feel like... If he's holding this blade and the figure falls, this blade will snap. So you want to be very careful with that. But this is very cool. And then it comes with this really nice looking flame effect that you could put on the blade itself. And it doesn't like, it's very loose. It just kind of slides on. It could fall off easily. Oh, maybe that's why. No, I don't know. I don't want to mess with it too much. But yeah, the blade effect does look cool. And that'll definitely make for some cool photos. But yeah. A lot of really fun accessories in here. Oh, wait, I forgot one. Here we go. Look at this. <laughs> the thing that makes me nervous on here is the whiskers. I feel like, I don't know if they're, I wonder if they're like metal wires. It's kind of hard to tell, but I feel like those things could break really easy. But I mean, so far they've been okay, but <laughs> this is very cool. I like this a lot. And look at the amount of paint detail that we have going on here. He's mostly gray, but then he has a pink tail. And then his arms are like a like a different shade of gray or maybe like a purplish color. And then he even has, whoa, look at his mouth is even painted. His teeth are painted. His eyes. That looks really nice. But yeah, there's a ridiculous amount of fun accessories in here. And like I said, it might be worth it just to get this set for the accessories alone if for some reason you don't like the figures. Uh, in which case, I would say that you were insane because the figures are awesome. <laughs> but the accessories are just as awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into some size comparisons. Starting off with Baxter and Splinter alongside the NECA Rocksteady and NECA Bebop. And it kind of caught me off guard how small Baxter and Splinter are because I realized that they are some of the smaller characters in the Ninja Turtles universe. But it didn't occur to me how short the figures would actually be in comparison to some of the other ones in the line. But I think <laughs> it kind of makes them cooler for it, you know, because they're so small. Uh, you know, they're like on a shelf full of these big monsters and they just look tiny and cool, you know. So I really like the way they size up next to bigger characters like these. And then next up we have Baxter and Splinter alongside the NECA Triceraton Infantryman and the NECA Foot Soldier. And then next up we have them alongside... Metalhead, and let's get one of my favorites over here, Casey Jones. And then next up, we have them alongside the Super 7 Raphael and the Super 7 Master Splinter. But let's go ahead and get the official NECA Raph in there. So here we have Raph alongside Baxter and Splinter. And then on this side, we're going to get, bam, Shredder. So I do like the size difference between Splinter and Shredder. I think that looks great. And let's go ahead and get Raph next to Master Splinter just so we can see how he looks. Yeah, I think that works out pretty good, actually. And then, of course, last but not least, we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And then let's go ahead and kick off the articulation, starting with Baxter. So first off, his head is on a ball joint, so it does move side to side. And I noticed that the further to the side you go, the tighter it gets. But it doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything like that. It does feel pretty safe, so I'm okay with that. But yeah, the head does move side to side, and then he does have a little bit of tilt to it. It could look up only to about right there, and then it could look down to right there. He doesn't have movement at the lower neck. All the movement is going to come from the head itself, but you can still get some pretty good stuff going. I like how much it's able to tilt, so that's nice. And then for the torso, it does swivel side to side. He can go to the side to about right there. Then you could bring it back to right here. Can't really crunch forward that much. 
And it crunches forward to about right there. I mean, that's pretty good. That's not too bad, actually. So just to give you a, a look at the kind of joint that we have going on in here. It's just a, a little ball joint. And this piece just kind of plugs into that ball joint. So yeah. I mean, it offers a little bit of movement, but not a whole lot. Still feel like it's enough for a little guy like Baxter. So I'm, I'm okay with the torso situation. And then for the arms, they do go all the way around. So that's nice. They do come out to the side to about right there. And then he does have double jointed elbows. There we go. Oh, look at that. That's a nice bend. Let's see if we can get this one going too. There we go. Man, that's a really nice double jointed elbow. There is no upper bicep swivel, but you do get a swivel at the elbow itself. And then at the hand, we have a swivel and a hinge. So pretty nice articulation at the arms. And then for the legs, they could come out to the side to about right there. They could come forward to about right there. Only go back to right there. And then we do have an upper thigh swivel, but there's not a whole lot of range, but there's enough. And I always love how they do their hips and thighs and stuff like that. There's not a whole lot of cuts or anything, but there's still some pretty good movement. We have this soft piece at the, uh, the waist here, but it's not as soft as his vest up here. But still, it doesn't really get in the way of the articulation at all, and it still covers the joints. So that's nice. And then we do have double jointed knees to get a pretty good bend. And then for the foot, we don't have a swivel. And that's that's weird because there's like a perfect spot for a lower leg swivel. And I don't know why they don't put it in there. They did the same kind of thing on Casey Jones, which I didn't understand. There was like a perfect spot to put the lower leg swivel or like an ankle swivel or something. And they just don't do it. So I don't know. I think that's kind of strange. But still, it is what it is. And then his foot could go forward to about right there. It could only come up to right there. And then it kind of gets blocked by the pants. And then we have rocking ankles so yeah they pack some pretty good articulation into this little guy I almost forgot his back pieces so the wings do hinge like like that i don't know how to describe it <laughs> but they hinge that way and then they could swivel then same thing for these arms they swivel and they hinge but yeah you got to be very careful with these arms i put a lot of heat on these things before i started moving them but yeah, as you can see, they move nicely now. So pretty good stuff as far as articulation goes on Mr. Stockman. Let's go ahead and get him to the side. And then as for Master Splinter, he has really good articulation too. So first off, his head does move side to side. It's got a little bit of tilt to it. And he actually has movement where the upper neck meets the head and where the lower neck meets the torso. So using both of those, you could get him to look up to about right there. And then you could get him to look down to right there. And then as I said, he does have a little bit of tilt, which is nice. And then it can move side to side, either at the head or at the neck. So pretty good movement at the head. And then his mouth is articulated as well. So you could open his mouth up. And I love that because it changes the whole look of the figure. It's always awesome to have options like that. And then for the torso, he does have a mid-torso joint that can twist side to side. But it doesn't get a whole lot of crunch. I can't get it to go forward at all. I mean, very little. It's kind of hard to see because the robe is on. I really don't want to take the robe off because then it'll be hard to get this belt back into place. But we don't want to see a naked rat anyways, right? But yeah, so the torso doesn't really move forward all that much. Doesn't really move back all that much either. But let's see. Doesn't really tilt. So it's basically just good for the swivel. And then for the arms. His arms could come up to about right there, even with the robe on. So that's nice. So that's pretty good. And then, his robe's getting messed up anyways, huh? 
and then his arms can go out to the side to about right there. He's got upper bicep swivel. He's got double jointed elbows and they get a really nice bend just like Baxter. There we go. And then at the hand he has a swivel and a hinge. For the legs, his legs go forward to about right there. They come out to the side a really good amount. He could almost do the splits. They can kick back only to about right there. And then it kind of goes out to the side. And then he does have an upper leg swivel, kind of. I mean, he has the same style of swivel as other NECA figures, but there's more going on with the sculpt. So it's kind of hard to get it to swivel. And then for the legs, he does have double jointed knees. Let's see what we got going on here. Bam, double jointed knees. And then he doesn't have any lower leg swivel. Again, they could have put it right above the ankle wrap. It would have been nice, but for whatever reason, they left it out. And then the foot goes forward to about right there, comes up to there, and it also rocks side to side. And then he does have articulated toes. And the tail is articulated as well. As you can see, we have a hinge here, and it does swivel a little bit, but it's kind of tight, so I've been kind of avoiding messing with it. But he also has a bendy wire in the tail itself. So the articulation on Splinter is pretty good too, but it takes some work to mess with. But you could definitely get him into some really cool, fun fighting poses. And yeah, I like the articulation on him. I think just the torso could have been a little bit better. But you could definitely get him into some cool fighting poses. So I'm happy with the articulation on both of these figures, actually. So at this point, I'm sure it's no surprise, but I absolutely love both of these figures. I think that NECA did a great job on pretty much every aspect of this set. Both figures came out nice. The articulation is good. They look beautiful. There is a little bit of QC issues on Baxter Stockman as far as the paint goes. It could have been a little bit cleaner, but there's nothing that's really making me dislike the figure or that's distracting me from enjoying it at all. I think overall, it's a beautiful looking figure, but some of the paint could have been cleaner. Splinter is pretty much all good. There's no paint imperfections. Some of the paint could have been done a little bit better, like on the nails, on the feet, and on the hands. But aside from that, I think that both of these figures came out looking really, really good. They both have pretty decent articulation. Nothing over the top, but there's enough to pose them around and have some fun with them. And as far as the accessories go, I can't believe how deep NECA goes with some of these things that they include with these turtle figures because, man, there's some deep cuts in here. Like, I used to like this show when I was a little kid, so that was like 30 years ago. I can't remember all these little things that happened in the show, but, man, they throw stuff in there, and it's like, who would remember this like 30 years later? Like a lot of the things in here I had to ask around about because I had no idea. I couldn't remember. I, I can't remember when Baxter turned the Mikey into like a gopher or whatever that is. It's cool that NECA threw it in there, but personally, it's kind of lost on me. But I think it's so dope that they do it. And I get excited for the people that are going to see that stuff and recognize exactly what it is. I think that's awesome. So shout out to NECA for doing that. Hopefully they continue on. And man, they're just killing it. I really love this animated turtle line. Like I said, it's probably my favorite line of 2020 because NECA just continues to kill it. There's always that element when it comes to NECA figures about the QC. But like I said, just be careful, warm things up, be patient, and you should be okay. And with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a channel member or buy an ODS head or... Just leave a comment or a like or any of that stuff. I appreciate it all. So thank you so much for watching. Peace.